All right, monopolies are not great because they have dead weight loss. They bring dead weight loss. And so how do we find dead weight loss on a graph? Um, well, we sort of think, um, what if firms just produced something at the cost of production? So if it costs $12 to produce a unit, they would sell them at $12. That's assuming, of course, no fixed costs, and we'll, we'll get into fixed costs later. But um, in which case, they'd be able to produce this number of units. So this would be like quantity um, in a utopia would be would be this quantity, the quantity where you just produce as many as you can, as many as people are willing to pay for if people are only paying the cost of production for that product. Um, but of course, that's not the quantity that monopolies choose. Monopolies are going to choose the quantity where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. And they're going to price that quantity not at marginal cost, not at the cost of production, but they're going to price it as high as they can, marking it up as much as they can, which is up on the demand curve, P star. In which case, um, we can compare the total uh, surplus in the case of the utopia versus the case of the actual monopoly. In the monopoly, we have to find producer surplus, and producer surplus is going to be um, the profit, or this actually is not necessarily profit if we account for fixed costs, but let's just ignore fixed costs for right now. And we see that um, for every product that the monopoly sells, they make um, a markup of this amount, the price minus the cost of production for that product, and they sell this number. So this area right here, that's going to represent the producer surplus. And the consumer surplus is, of course, going to represent, um, be represented by this triangle here. And we can think of that because we know that this customer um, who's on the demand curve, who's willing to pay this amount of money, $599 for the product, um, but they're being charged $300, that means there's a $299 surplus that that particular person gets from purchasing the product at this price. And there's a person lined up next to them, and that person is represented here on the demand curve, where this represents this person's value for the product. And of course, they are paying less than they value the product, so that difference between what they value it at and what they're paying for it, that is this person's surplus. And we know all of these people are purchasing products and all the way up through Q star. And so we add up the surplus for each of these people to get the consumer surplus. And so total surplus is producer plus consumer surplus. And if we compare that to the utopian case, in the utopian case, and I don't want to make this too messy, but we might imagine all of these other people, let me just pick three of them, all of these other people would get products um, produced at marginal cost, sold at marginal cost. So for each of these people, this person values the product at this much. They, um, they value it at $50. They're paying $12, which is the cost of production. So uh, they get this $38 surplus. And we do that for every single person who gets the product in the utopian world. I've just picked three random people, but you might imagine you do this for every single person, including all of these green people over here, in which case the consumer surplus is this entire big triangle here. And there's no producer surplus in that case because the company is just selling things at the marginal cost, so there's no profit, there's no, there's no revenue actually. Um, so when we compare the total surplus in the utopian world, with the total surplus in the monopoly world, the difference between those is the dead weight loss from the existence of the monopoly. And so that red is the dead weight loss. And that's dead weight loss in a monopoly.